What's up guys? We are back with some more pre-production samples. Our Zesray Studio, Combatants Fight for Glory, Roman Centurions and Legionnaires figures. So there's been Greek stuff, there's been gladiatorial stuff, there's been Minotaurs obviously, and then the Romans are the newer stuff. And I think these look really cool. There's definitely two sides to these figures. The looks and the articulation, and they're very much opposing each other. The looks are terrific. Articulation suffers because of the looks, if that makes any sense, how they're put together in all this armor. There are three of these figures that we're going to talk about, and this is Marcus the Centurion. We're going to use him as our guinea pig when it comes to articulation, and then we'll bring the other two in uh, to talk about visuals and all the cool stuff that they are clad in. So as far as moving this guy around, we've got a head that can look up a little bit and look down pretty good. You've got your tilt side to side rotation. Arms out basically all the way at the shoulder. They swivel just fine at that shoulder as well. You've got a single jointed 90 degree swiveling elbow. The wrists are ball hinges and they are okay without the armor on because you can take that off. Just pop the hand off and take the armor off. It'll move really well but the armor does sort of get in the way if it's, you know, seated appropriately. So watch out and just sort of pay attention to where it's posing. And then you got your swivel there. Obviously, he is wearing a lot, a lot of plastic armor. This is going to get in the way, especially when it comes to the hips and the torso. So there is some kind of a ball cut in here. You can swivel him side to side. You can hear all this stuff sort of rubbing against itself. Tilt a little bit. And then while he can go backwards and forwards, it doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, he can go forward, he can lurch forward slightly, not the most dynamic. The legs suffer in the same way because this is all really hard. Well, it's not hard, but it's not soft and super, super pliable either. The legs go out about that far, that's it. They really can't kick forward either. So if you wanted to maybe cut into this plastic, you know, like plenty of other toys, they'll have a cut in there to allow the legs to kick out. You could, you could do that yourself, but they do not come like that. Uh, so if you wanted to give more range on these legs, that's an option. I'm not gonna do that. You got a twist up in there. We've got double jointed knees. They go back about yay far. Ankles are pretty good on these guys though. So you've got hinges and you got pretty decent rocker. And there's also a nicely hidden cut at the top of this like sandal that's hidden by this armor plate here for the, for the calf. So you do have some decent articulation on these guys. I think there's a possibility that they could have been a little bit better had the armor actually been cut, but you would have lost the visuals. And, I, and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, give and take on this. I think they look terrific. So I don't know if a big unsightly cut in that torso would have been the right move. But as a result, they are going to be less dynamic than just about, well, every other figure, really. They are relatively limited and very traffic coney, uh, just because there is this huge plastic overlay that sits over top of, like, what, 40% of the joints. Where I think these guys really excel, though, is in the visuals and, by extension, their accessories. Because the accessories make these guys look infinitely cooler once we start talking about their helmets. So, we've got three different figures again, and they're all essentially built on the same framework. But they do have different things about them. They all look like they go together, but they are, of course, different. So, we've got Marcus in the middle. He's the Centurion. He seems to be kind of the leader. This guy here is Aulus the Signifier, which I think is just a rad name. And then this is just a generic Roman infantry, a soldier. And they've got different types of armor to kind of denote, I guess, their rank in some ways. This guy has the more plain set of plate armor. Marcus has like a scale mail and some plate. And he has more armor as well. And then Aulus has more like a chain mail type of armor, but it's not exactly, I'm not sure what you would call that. But then they all have different things that are all similar as well. So you've got the beginnings of the skirt piece here with just the red. You've got more here with the brown, and then Marcus has more of it with more frills and a little bit more paint, and seemingly more detailed to denote his stature and his status and things like that. He's also got this overlay with these discs all over him. I don't know what in the world those are supposed to be, but they are you know, clearly based on Roman historical pieces, things of that nature. And I think in general that these guys look tremendous. Like the paint is really good on the armor. That gold is really nice and bright and vibrant. The silver is super bright, very clean. Overall, the sculpt on these guys is, is really well done as well. There's a lot of stuff on them for better or worse. Obviously, I've already kind of talked about why I think it's not the greatest, but I think they look really, really good. This very much, you know, kind of evokes that idea of, of Roman military, and I think it works really well. Specifically, just the idea that these guys 
look like a cohesive group of figures, but are all uniquely di different from one another. You know, there's differences down at the, like the calves, the armor on Marcus is gold, for example, little things like that to help them stand out. They all have unique head sculpts. And the heads on these, I'm going to have to note, these are pre-production, so I've been told that they are not final paint applications, like they're likely going to look better than this. And I think these look okay, uh, but overall there definitely does seem to be a little bit of room for improvement. So take that with a grain of salt. There is uh, there's going to be a difference between what I've got here on screen now and what you might be getting uh, as a finished product. But this definitely seems like, you know, if they improve this, they're going to look even better. Marcus, of course, has soft goods, so he's got this sort of fur. It's okay. Nothing really to write home about. My main focus for these figures is really just how this armor drapes over them and, and makes them look. I mean, they look terrific, specifically Marcus. I think he's the standout. When we, when we talk about this particular configuration, as I mentioned, uh, they do have helmets and there are other aspects of these figures uh, that will come through when we see their accessories and things of that nature because the, the helmets really do make them into something much more cool for me. But this is how they, this is kind of how their base form looks like uh, where they are not fully battle ready. But I think these guys look really great together. Nice paint, nice sculpt work, and just enough different across all three to make you maybe want to get all of them or have reason to, you know, maybe hone in on one that you think is the coolest and then you can just go with that one and maybe build from there. But the sculpt is good, the paint is good. The idea, I think, has translated pretty well into figure form from a visual perspective. There is still, uh, you know, room to improve when it comes to articulation and how these guys can move with this construction, but they do look really nice. As far as size comparisons go, we're gonna, run a bunch of different lines because this is such a different kind of figure. So we've got the infantry in the middle. We've got Magnus from Mythic Legions on the right. Forge from Marvel Legends on the left. And of course, Forge is a different scale-ish. These guys are not necessarily the same as Legions, but they're also not too different. Their armor makes them much bigger than I think they actually would be otherwise. They make them bulkier for sure, specifically around the middle. I mean, they're, they're very thick boys uh, through and through but they do look pretty decent alongside legions. Let's do, a, let's do a figure arts. So here is Super Saiyan 4 Goku, obviously not in scale. Let's do an animal warrior. Here is uh, Tiberius from Sparrow Toys. Let's do a Super 7 Ultimates. Here is Goldar. And then one more because it's fresh in mind and at hand. Here is one of the Minotaurs from the Zesray line, of course, much, much bigger than our Roman guys. But these these are gonna fit pretty well alongside a lot of other figures. They don't look too big alongside normal 112, and they definitely seem like they're gonna fit alongside Super 7, alongside NECA, and alongside stuff like Mythic Legions. Now, as far as accessories goes, I'm gonna run through each figure individually, because not because they have a lot of stuff, but because I wanna kinda of focus on what they have, because I really, really like the accessories here. And I've already mentioned it, a lot of that is these helmets that they have. So this is Aulus the Signifier, and he has probably my favorite of the bunch, just because, I don't know, I just, I just like it. We're going to start and stop there. I like it. So he's got, first of all, he has a wolf skin that hangs over top of him. And it's, this is just rubbery plastic, and it sits okay. It's not my favorite aspect of this, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. I mean, it definitely makes him look pretty hardcore. And then you've got the actual helmet underneath. And what's really cool about these is not only do they very much, you know, look very Romanesque and very much fit the time period, they have removable masks on the front. So you can just have the head exposed. What I don't like is that you can't really put these on while the mask is on. It'll pop the mask off. There's just two little uh, pieces on top that'll peg into the underside of the helmet. It's a very nitpicky thing, really doesn't matter but it's not, uh, it's not something you can just plop down on his head. It will likely pop that face shield off, but this just looks so cool. I'm really happy with these. They definitely transform the idea of these figures into something a little bit different. Uh, we do get some extra hands with these guys, so they come with, well, at least how they came to me anyway. They came with gripping hands. You get a set of fists and a set of grabby, but not like super grippy hands. So you get four extra hands, six total. They come with some of their swords. Some of them have swords and they're on them. So this one, he's got like kind of like a gladius kind of sword. Short sword, silver blade, gold uh, handle and white uh, grip there. Nothing really crazy, but it looks looks really nice. Very much appropriate to the to the theme here. And then he's got some more signature accessories too. They all, they all sort of have different stuff that sets them apart 
in relation to uh, their helmet as well. And I'm going to put this back on him because, you know, that just looks cool. So he's got a shield. He gets a round shield. And this looks great. I mean, he's able to hold it really well. It's got a really, really interesting handle system on these, but it works nicely. Good paint, like kind of distressed as well. And then he's also got this monster thing, like a like a standard, and it's got the Roman uh, SPQR, which was the like the uh, the Senate designation. It's basically in reference to the Roman government. I don't remember what it stands for. And this thing's huge. I mean, it's absolutely massive. It's taller than the figure itself. Kind of brittle, so watch out. Uh, it's actually multiple pieces, so this piece sort of hides the where it all joins together. But it goes along with his name, Aulus the Signifier. So it, this is him holding the battle standard, basically. So that is his loadout. And again, it might be my favorite of the bunch, but they are all really good. Now with Marcus, he is similar but different. That's basically the theme here, similar but different. So he gets a helmet also. You get a removable face shield. His is gold, and he has this massive, massive red plume on the top. Again, it's to denote the fact that he seems to be, you know, if you wanted to do this, he's like the boss of the three when it comes to that. Really, really like this one. I just kind of like Alice's better. You get a Gladius. And you also get a dagger. He comes with the same assortment of hands. So you get the two uh, gripping, two fist, two slightly grabby. We get a cane, I guess to kind of indicate that maybe he's, you know, a little older and maybe injured from battle, something like that. And then he also includes this monster shield. So this big old rectangular shield. It's got the same kind of markings as the round shield. It's just a very, very different shape. So he doesn't have any kind of massive weapon like like the other two are going to have, uh, but he comes with more stuff that's in line with maybe a commander with the two uh, swords, the dagger and, and, the, and the sword, the cane, and then his really cool mask, along with this very, very prominent shield, which, again, I think this is just really cool. And then the infantry will round us out for accessories, and he has, again, he has a helmet. His is very different. It's unique across all of them. The face shield re is removable, of course. And this looks a little bit more imposing to me. It definitely looks like something you might see on the front lines. So it looks a little bit less ceremonial than the more face-like shields that we had with the other two figures. I really like it, though. I like the helmets across the board on these. He also has a gladius sword, so it's on his, uh, it's on his hip there. He gets the same large shield as Marcus, the Centurion. And again, this thing is just huge. I love it. It's really, really big. He comes with a shovel which I guess makes sense for an infantryman. I'm not so sure I really care about it in the confines of a toy, but he's got it. And then he also has this big, uh, like, pike accessory, which is pretty cool. I like this from an infantry perspective. You could see him, like, you know, jabbing somebody uh, be from behind that shield. And it is very large. It has quite a bit of height on it. So these guys don't have, like, a ton of accessories, but I think what they have is pretty substantial. I really like these helmets. I think they look terrific. I like the idea behind them. They work pretty well. And then they all have very, very Roman-esque, Roman-themed style accessories to, to round out these figures really nicely. So overall, I think these guys are pretty solid, but they definitely have a hang-up when it comes to articulation. And that's, that's really my only gripe with these figures, is that they just have trouble moving at that waist and the hips because there is so much plastic over top of those joints. You can get them into some decent poses well enough, but maybe not as dynamic as I would have liked otherwise. Where they truly excel, though, is the visuals. I think this armor looks great. The design is really well done. It very much harkens back to, you know, a Roman-style suit of armor. I think it works really well. I like the differences between the three figures, but I also like the fact that they are kind of cohesive at the same time. And I really think the accessories absolutely put them over the top. Again, they don't have a ton of stuff, but what they have works really, really well. I like those shields. I like some of the unique weaponry. And I really, again, for the 50th time, I absolutely love these helmets. I think they transform the figures and make them look far cooler than without them. So that's going to do it for this look at the Zesray Studios Combatants Fight for Glory Roman Centurions. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.